You know, I probably do. Here, here come here. Your ponytail is tucked in. Oh, you thank you. That you want that, you want that ponytail yeah. out? Now we're trying. We're trying to be secretive here. Yeah. Right? Okay. They don't know I'm Chinese. I mean, they don't know that I'm Cherokee. <laughs> I thought you were gay. <laughs> All right, that's you got that's that on the, <laughs> the, You got that on there? We got that on there. That's going on my personal file. Okay. All right. Here, let me take my hat off. So oh I well, look, okay. So, so we'll I look like I'm reading matcha. Go ahead. Good enough. Well, yeah. you just haven't got over this uh, this right stuff stuff, have you? No, no actually, I have a long time ago. Yeah. I don't do these things very often. So. Well, that's what I hear. I mean, other than uh, Neil, occasionally, you're one of the ones that seldom comes out. Well, you know, I had a. 22-year Air Force career, and I had a 23-year uh, business career. So, <laughs> 10, 10 years of my Air Force were with NASA, so I've right. done a lot of other things in my life. You want to know how to build railroad cars? I'm good at that. Okay. Well, you work for Pullman. <coughs> right. Not, more than work for it, you were one of the bosses of it. Yeah, I ran Pullman Standard. That was a lot of fun. Right. Yeah. And then I was in the utility, gas and electric utility business for mm -hmm. a few years. Then I worked for Rockwell and right. Defense Electronics. I did a lot of their engineering stuff, and you know, I just had a good, good life. Now, you're now I'm retired. Yeah. Now, in your space career, your career working for NASA, you have any favorite moments? Oh. Uh, or least favorite moments? Take it that way. No. Probably the niftiest thing was when we got Apollo 13 back in one place. I was the program. Man I was a spacecraft program manager after I left astronauting, so I ran the Apollo spacecraft program for. Uh, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So right. we had a lot of interesting things on those lunar landings. Yeah. So uh, now uh, there was, there's always been some controversy about why we go to the space. What do, you, what do you think about manned exploration or <coughs> human exploration since we have women up there? Well, I think that probably we could do better on man. Mm -hmm. I think we've done the, uh, the manned stuff with Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo, Skylab. And so we showed we could operate. We showed that we could get into space and get back down on Mercury. We, on Gemini, we showed we could operate on it. Apollo, we had a goal to go to the moon. We did. Right. <clears throat> Skylab was some very long duration flights. And then after that, I don't know. Uh, when I was in NASA, we knew what the mission was: go to the moon. Right. Today, I kind of think they're sort of looking around for a mission. You know, we've been building this space station for eons it seems like and as soon as we get it built we're going to stop flying a shuttle that right. you know that uh, flies in the face of common sense but yeah. um, I don't I think the NASA administrator has a tough job okay. now, <coughs> now when you uh, when you flew you flew Apollo 9 <coughs> yes you flew Apollo 9 which stayed in earth orbit and my understanding is you turned down an opportunity to fly on Apollo 8 which is going to be circling the moon. yeah that's that's any truth yeah, to that? We aren't going to talk about that. No, okay. that's that's old hat, and uh, and nobody knows what really happened anyway. So, and you wouldn't have known until the actual <laughs> mission came up anyway. No. <coughs> no, I knew what Apollo 8 was long before it was flown and stuff like that. I I was early in the in the program, so I got involved in all of that stuff. But, well, you, um, Go ahead. Do you have any advice for folks who are interested in space as a career, both uh, and in the air and on the ground? Um, I think that um, you know all the space flights that we flew <coughs> were, were manned by very few people right. and supported by hundreds of thousands on the ground. <coughs> so I think that there's always going to be a need for a tremendous number of scientists and smart people on the ground. And whether we fly manned or unmanned really doesn't make any difference. It only matters, you know, a few people in space. I, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, I got bronchitis. Quite a lot. The, uh, <coughs> the uh, extra weight you have to put on a spacecraft to take care of people is very, very high. Mm -hmm. And at one time we were looking about at flying a shuttle with a bigger payload and the obvious thing to do is to take the crew station right out of it. Right. Put the automatic landing system in it, which we've had developed at Rockwell. And um, you can increase the payload by really a large amount. So uh, you know there's there's advantage. I think in the early days we needed to see if man could work in space and do things like that. But 
to just do it as a gimmick, I don't, I don't think that's. Now, do you remember what the ratio was on fuel to every pound on Apollo? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you put the weight in the ascent stage of the lunar module, mm -hmm. you had to have more fuel in it to launch it. Right. And that meant that the descent stage had to carry the extra weight, the extra fuel. Right. So you had to have more fuel in there, which meant you had to have bigger tanks, more weight. So that meant that the service module had to carry more fuel to get the lunar modules both into orbit, and that meant that the Saturn V had to be able to carry a bigger payload to get them into orbit. So it's a very stiff penalty that you pay for putting things on the top like that. And um, there was a time when we were paying, I think it was like $10,000 an ounce. This is back in the 60s dollars, you know, that was a lot of money. That was real money back then. To, to take about an ounce of weight off the lunar module ascent stage. Yeah. Um, but today when we're spending, well, I'm, how many trillion? I saw on the TV this morning, this, this, all the bailout stuff is, is going to end up around 10 trillion or more, which is a total of the national debt at the present time. So we're going to essentially double it in one year, which personally I think is stupid. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, it was a very crucial thing, and I know many a time I came home from work uh, to see my wife, and and I'd be shaking my head and see what's the matter. Huh? Yeah. And I don't think we're going to get to the moon. I don't think we can get the lunar module light enough to fly. And ultimately, we did. So. Right. Yeah. But it took a lot of good engineers and a lot of good. Took people a lot of good engineers. The Grumman guys had some really good engineers. They weren't very good businessmen, but they were really great engineers. <laughs> they lost some money. <laughs> well, I had a couple of occasions when I was running a program to explain to them that they were calculating their uh, incentive awards improperly and that they should really do it the other way because it meant another five million dollars to them. And they told me that they knew how to do it, and that was the way they were going to do it. So, but anyway, they were a great group of guys, and I enjoyed working with them. Can't argue with that, can you? Pardon? I said you can't argue with no, that. No, no, no. All right. Yeah. Well, appreciate you talking. Okay, to take us. good care of your ponytail. I, well, I thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I used to, I used to work. I, were, I were in. Uh, I was in the uh, mission control from sixteen to seven. <laughs> down at um, I, down at uh, Houston. Yeah. Was an antique. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think one of the things about uh, the show we're doing here is that uh, you're getting a chance to look at some of the stuff that took place a long time ago. And the future of man flight, space flight is kind of up in the air. Well, we so the value of these things over over time is going to increase dramatically. You know, when you look at the it's kind of like week, some of the stuff that they're digging up on Abraham Lincoln and George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Today is, you know, it's very interesting. And I think people in 20, 30 years from now will find the same thing that's uh, going on today and with, with, with all of us old dinosaurs here. Thanks. Thank you.